Hi and welcome. I'm Dr. D. This is the episode number two of Ask Dr. D. In today's episode, I'm going to be answering and discussing three questions. One, in a long distance relationship, how can you know when you're ready to live together? The second question, after an engagement has been broken off and ended, how do you know when you're ready to get back into the dating world? And the third question is, how can you start to rebuild trust once it's been broken so that you can begin to feel more secure and less needy? And I think these are three really great questions. So let's begin with the first one. The first one is, when you're in a long distance relationship, how can you know when you're ready to move in together? You know, it's interesting that when you're in a long distance relationship, sometimes those moments, they're almost idyllic sometimes, right? Because you only have like these snippets of time and everything is kind of moved right into this, however many days you're going to be getting together. And so you don't have like the day to day stuff that might come up. And so you reserve all of that. You kind of put that aside and you really embrace those handful of days that you're going to be together. And it sounds wonderful. And it's during this time that people say, listen, you know, we've been in this long distance relationship for however long, and we're really thinking about maybe we should start to live together because to travel back and forth and trying to figure things out just is really starting to, to wane on people, right? So they start to think, should we, should we live together? And I think that there's some things to think about before you do that. First off, you want to think about, are you being pushed to do it? Or do you really want to live with that person? And you really want to live together? Pushed meaning, do you feel like, okay, I don't really want to travel anymore, maybe we should just do it. Sometimes people who, especially in New York City, when leases are going to be up or something like that, they're like, okay, our lease is up, let's just, let's just live together to save some money. And so we have these outside external forces sometimes that maybe would rush or expedite this process. But the process really should be thought about. And so, of course, you want to think about, are we being pushed or is it something that you really want to do? And so you have to think about, like, why now and why would we wait? And maybe why wouldn't we wait? And then before you move in together, you really want to have some of the more serious discussions, correct? For example, you know, what are your expectations of the relationship once you're, once you're living together? How, how well do you get along day to day when you are together? Have you traveled together? And how well do you travel together? Do you have similar lifestyles? You know, whether how you spend your time, your work ethic, that kind of thing. How much of those things line up with one another? Another thing to consider is your communication style. How well do you communicate? Do you argue a lot? Do you, um, when you're not together, do you fight? Thinking about how you both lean into this relationship, lean into those conversations that sometimes are very difficult, right? People should also be discussing before you move in together, you know, money situations and financial. How we can, how will we live together? How, you know, who will pay for what? How are we going to manage those finances? And so those are some of the more, um, meaty kind of conversations you should be having and the, and the, and the conversation should be somewhat serious, right? Because this is a huge step that both of you are taking and you're thinking, okay, is this really the right time? And why now, like I said in the beginning, as opposed to say like another time. So taking a step back and thinking about, you know, have we had the harder talks? Have we talked about the finances? Can we travel together? Do we get along day to day? How do we see things in our lifestyle? What things are important to us? Um, where are we going to live and how often will we see our families if we're going to be living away from our families? And I think, and what's our communication style and can we communicate? And when things have come up, how we discuss them? Because once you start to live together, it's a day to day. And sometimes there's a lot of extra pressures that come that when you're in a long distance relationship, you're not necessarily going to have. And so for that person who wrote in, thank you. And I hope that helps. And let's go on to the next question. The next question that was submitted was after an engagement, you know, how can, how can I get back into the dating game? And I think that this is really a great question because first you have to remember, or maybe you've already realized this is that when something, when a relationship ends and, and for this person, they were engaged and so they were probably together for a while mm -hmm. and they had this whole process of being engaged and that the breakup is, you know, it's like a death, right? It's like, Death isn't just when someone actually dies or like your pet dies. Death, the, the experiences of grief and, and the feelings of loss and loneliness come from the death of something. It could be, you know, the death of a dream. And in this case, the, the, the death of a dream of we're going to be together forever. We're going to have this kind of life and we're going to have this kind of wedding. We're going to be living wherever we're going to be living. And so people really grieve the loss of the future and even like the present day as well. And so you're, th this could be 
very traumatizing. You know, I, I don't know all the particulars of this particular case, but it's trauma, right? It's like we were in this relationship, we were doing this thing, we got engaged, we took that huge next step, and then all of a sudden it ends. And how do you move on from that? So I think that when people want to move on, it's, it's really about centering yourself first, correct? It's like, where are you? How long has it been? You know, oftentimes people do like a rebound relationship, which this has happened in this particular case. And then that one kind of crashed and burned, which is very, very, um, you know, it's very common because lots of people just don't want to be alone and they feel such a loss of that relationship. They want to fill it with something else. And they think, well, I'm just going to go do this rebound relationship. That, that shouldn't be so bad. And oftentimes it doesn't really turn out to be that great. Now, sometimes, yes, you're always going to have those people have a rebound relationship and that works out. By and large, it really depends on the, the, the circumstances around this breakup, you know, how long it's been. So to help you get back into the dating game, you're going to be thinking about what were your takeaways in this relationship? What have you learned from this relationship? Have you started to work through your pain? Have you thought about the loss that you experienced from, from, this, from this relationship? And, you know, what are you going to do moving forward differently, right? Because even though breakups are really, really challenging, oftentimes there's a silver lining or there's a little bit of something that we can learn from that. And that's really what you want your takeaway to be. What have I learned? Where am I? Where have I been? Where do I want to be? And when I approach the dating world again, what's that going to look like? How do I feel about myself? Where am I in this journey right now? Am I still going through a lot of pain? Or do I feel I'm starting to move, move out of it a little bit? How am I going to start dating? Am I going to take inventory of like what worked in that relationship? And of course, what didn't work in that relationship? And how did I show up in that relationship? And what's important to me? Was I honoring the things that were important to me in that previous relationship and I want to carry those into the next one? These are the things you really want to start to think about for yourself. And you want to make sure that you're in a good space so that when you start to get out there and date again, you feel like, okay, I've done some of this work. Is all the work going to be done? No, because in dating, we really get to know ourselves. I mean, when we date, sure, we get to know other people, but we really get to know ourselves as well. And so I say, you know, go out, have some levity, you know, have a little fun with it. Don't take it overly serious. Really feel, figure out like where you are. Are you grounded? Do you feel good about, you know, so far going through this journey? Do you feel like you've given yourself enough time? And, you know, mindfulness, right? Mindfulness is kind of being in the moment, accepting how you feel without passing judgment. And when we get back in the dating game, we're going to be anxious and that's okay. Just be mindful of that and accept it and say, I've been through something and I'm just getting back into the dating game and I'm going to expect myself to be a little anxious. I might be a little cautiously optimistic. I might be a little hesitant, but you know, it's like thinking about where you are and taking a deep breath and, and figuring out, I feel like I'm in a good space and I'm, you know, really want to get back on the dating game and I have done some of the work. And I know I have a little more work to do, but I'm going to slowly move myself into that new world. And thank you for submitting that question and good luck. The last question that was submitted was how to rebuild trust after it's been broken. Now in this particular case, what happened was this person is with in a relationship and the boyfriend started to go on uh, social media and like a lot of other pictures, a lot of other posts by other men. And so the partner was really upset by this and expressed really, I feel really uncomfortable if you're going on, you're liking all these guys or you're liking all these pictures and you're doing all these things. It makes you feel really uncomfortable. So instead of the partner saying, okay, um, I hear what you're saying, I'm, I don't, I'm not gonna do that. Um, the partner blocked him and um, made his account like private or something like that or blocked something out so that the partner really couldn't see any more of his likes. Then the person said, okay, so he really wanted to build back the trust and say, you know, what can I do? And then the partner who stepped out or was liking all these other people, these other guys said, you know, well, just give me like a list or something of things and we can discuss whatever's coming up for you for the month. Of course, this created a lot of uncertainty in the partner, correct? Because he all, all of a sudden is kind of feeling needy or he's feeling insecure about the relationship and was trying to figure out like, what do I do? Do I just like let it go or, or what do I do in this situation? And I think the, the biggest takeaway in this situation is that this this guy really made it about himself when it really should have been about the partner. The partner was not doing anything to, 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 to build back trust or to build any trust. He broke the trust. He broke the trust by, it's not just liking 
people on uh, social media or Instagram or whatever it was, correct? I mean, I understand that's one variable, but the other variable is that the partner said, please don't do that, and that makes me feel uncomfortable. Instead of honoring that and hearing what he had to say, he just, he just blocked him. And so how do you rebuild trust on that? And how do you have those conversations? And more importantly, what is the partner willing to do, the one that was liking everything, what is he willing to do to rebuild the trust? Because it's not that person's, the, the one partner's responsibility to rebuild the trust. He's like, okay, so what kind of conversations or how do I bring this conversation up? Or, you know, do I say, hey, can we talk about something? Honestly, the, the, the onus, the responsibility really is on the person right who was liking all these different pictures and kept doing that and then blocked his partner even when his partner said it makes me feel, really feel uncomfortable and this is really this really comes up a lot in other times in other relationships where the trust has been broken the hurt party is trying to scramble and to figure some things out and what to do when the when the truth is the responsibility is on the person who stepped out correct they're the ones that had to provide transparency. They're the ones that have to start the conversations. They are the ones that should be showing up and saying, okay, what can I do to help you rebuild the trust or help us rebuild the trust? Because, you know, I am the one that, I am the one that stepped out. And so my experience has been that often the people that are hurt are trying to figure this all out and, and, and they don't want to check the phones and they don't want to do anything and they, they don't want to spend that energy, but they find themselves spending that kind of energy trying to rebuild the trust. When I say, it wasn't on you, it's on the other person. So for that person who wrote in, my suggestion would be is that you approach your partner and you talk about where you are in this and that he has to really lead this conversation to rebuild the trust. And I hope that helped. I hope that everybody that wrote in, thank you for taking the time to do that. I really appreciate it. And I'm hoping that those questions are helping other people, or those answers are helping other people as well. And of course, you can always drop me an email at hello at kristendavin.com or shoot me a message you know, on Instagram or on my Facebook page or DM me. If you've got a question, I would be happy to help you out. And thank you again for tuning in. I will see you next month with another episode. Thank you.